County Board Wrap-Up, our monthly chat about some of the key decisions the board takes at its meetings. Today we'll be talking with the board members about the last board meeting of 2016, and we are going to be talking a lot about facilities. I'm your host, Mary Curtis. Joining us today are County Board Chair Libby Garvey and Board Member Christian Dorsey. Libby and Christian, thank you for joining us That's again today. great to be Hello, here. Mary. How yeah. are you? I'm good, and here we are at the last one of the year. <laughs> yeah. 2016 yeah. has flown by, and it I has. mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to start out by talking to you a little bit about the sharing economy. You yep. did some actions yep. at the December board meeting about the sharing economy, and the first one I wanted to talk to you about is short-term residential rentals. Yeah. Libby, what can you tell us about the action the board Well, took? it was interesting, because you said we're going to talk a lot about facilities, and this is sort of facilities, but these are private in, in yes. private homes. So I think the first thing that people need to understand, which I think a lot of people didn't, is that until we made, took this action, they were all illegal. We uh -huh. had over a thousand people. If you went on like a site, for example, like Airbnb, and there were all of these postings, and, all, and actually every single one of them were illegal because we hadn't done any uh -huh. kind of like so. That was why we took it up in part because there were a whole lot going on, um, and we started hearing more and more both sides. People who were putting in their air, you know, wanting to put their 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 homes or their rooms up for rent uh -huh. uh, for a brief period of time, and wondering how do I do this? And we didn't have anything to tell them. Uh -huh. Then there were other people saying, this is going on and there are people arriving at one in the morning and it's wrong no. and, and, and what are you going to do about it? And it was hard because we didn't really have even a legal framework to kind of deal with it. So um, there was really quite a bit of need. Um, and then, of course, we have, you know, in January we're expecting quite an influx of people. Um, and I expect there's going to be even more uh, people wanting to, you know, share their homes briefly. So we wanted to make it possible and give a structure. Um, preserving our, you know, the, our neighborhoods and preserving, uh -huh. sort of making it comfortable for people who are living there already, and yet lowering barriers for people who would like to make a little extra income on their homes. Christian, home. was so. this a tough one for you uh, on any level? Did you have any concerns? Well, of course. I mean, uh, you know, you definitely have those concerns of protecting neighborhood character, but we also want to permit this use, which has clearly been very beneficial to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes the very high cost of housing in Arlington, affordable for some people. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, it provides an opportunity for companionship. There are many good elements to it, yeah. but at the same time, unregulated, uh, it has the potential to change the, the nature of, of neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that uh, what we do enables this activity while at the same time uh, preserving the neighborhood character and making it so that when you buy a home in an Arlington neighborhood, you're not necessarily buying into a commercial area where mm -hmm. there's going to be all kinds of activity happening 24-7. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm actually proud of the action. I think we struck a I really so. good balance with sensible regulation. And uh, I hope it's going to be a model in the rest of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we heard interesting stories. My favorite was the one of the baby that was born. Yeah, that's right. An <laughs> Airbnb baby. Was baby. Airbnb. <laughs> It was not at the home, but it, the, oh. that, but the, this baby arrived early, and then the family <laughs> stayed longer because they had to adjust, so there was a baby. I mean, it was just really some really nice stories about people connecting. Are there any key elements of this that you would like to highlight? Sure. I take it this doesn't mean anything goes in a private right. home That's in a, right. in a residential. You can't, right. like, have a banquet, right? Or That's right. It can't rent be, it out it as a yeah. wedding hall. It can't be in, <laughs> in places that are used for commercial purposes. So. Okay. We're regulating uh, use by uh, homeowners mm -hmm. right now, and actually we're going to take up next month the ability to apply these regulations to people who are long-term renters oh, of homes okay. who make up a good portion of, of Arlington's yeah. uh, housing occupants. So, you know, we take those homes, mm -hmm. and it, you, it can be an accessory use, okay. and it's kind of regulated as an occupation. Oh, and okay. so the primary use has got to be a residence. You have mm -hmm. to occupy it more than half the year mm -hmm. oh, okay. as a residence. Mm -hmm. And you can use either all or part of your home. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have no more than the larger of six people mm -hmm. in the entire place or two people per bedroom, whichever is larger. Uh, but essentially, all of that is, is designed to make sure we know who mm -hmm. is operating um, their homes as short-term rentals. It's something that is permitted, it's mm -hmm. legal, it's enabled, but at the same time doesn't have the character and flavor of 
a hotel, okay. for example. Because okay. they have different regulations. That's right. Okay, yeah. so this yep. is very much you're renting out your house or a portion of your house, but this is your house. It's where still you live. your yeah, house. Yeah, we call it sort of home sharing is what we're calling it. Okay. okay. It is, so. Well, well yeah. this wasn't the only sharing thing that you took up. You also took <laughs> no, up yes. car sharing. Car People sharing, sharing, their homes. Homes. sharing their cars. Sharing yeah. economy. What else can you share? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll probably don't <laughs> ask because we're going to find out probably. <laughs> so I mean, that's where we are today. So this was, we've we've had a pilot program going on for about a year now with with car to go mm -hmm. um, and actually re so first it was like just inside Arlington um, mm -hmm. and this was people sign on and I think what did they say I think for every car to go they figure they take seven cars off the road sometimes eleven yeah so people now are deciding maybe I don't need my to buy a second oh. car or maybe I even don't need my own car because there are all kinds of ways to get around and when I really need a car I belong to this group called car to go and I can get this little car and drive it around mm -hmm. um, and so that's been going on and, and actually we a, a few months ago uh, it was a pilot and mm -hmm. then we extended the pilot over into the district of Columbia so people could because at first you had to stay within Arlington oh, I see transportation doesn't work real well when it has to be <laughs> you know <laughs> very small area it works a yes. lot better if you can go farther yes. and that really um, increased the number of people using it um, and so it was a pilot and we made it made it more formal and put in um, we're going to continue to evaluate it mm -hmm. in another year but we also put in place a, a basic platform of, of regulations which will allow us I think to work with other jurisdictions again it, it's better if it's not just with one jurisdiction it's better if you could work as a region and this this enables us to do that and Christian were there any concerns about this too had you heard anything from the community yes uh, you know much like yeah. the uh, short-term rental issue that we just talked about car to go is different from what most people uh, have become very familiar with in Arlington the zip car yes. car sharing yeah. service which is reserved space car sharing mm -hmm. car to go is free free floating you don't have to park it in a designated oh, spot see. it can actually park anywhere uh, in okay. the public that was right the issue. away and that's the <laughs> okay. issue because of okay. course in our neighborhoods because of the scarcity of uh, parking mm -hmm. availability we have a lot of residentially zone permit parking mm -hmm. and the agreement with car to go says that uh, they can stay there for 24 hours mm -hmm. And we're compensated for that. It's not like they're doing it oh, for, for free, free right. but uh, mm -hmm. it seems that in some cases those cars were staying long, long in advance or long past mm -hmm. the 24-hour requirement. Okay. And so there's really been an effort to figure out yeah. how we can get that business, that mm -hmm. private business, to uh, not have those cars sit for so long. Mm -hmm. It's not in their interest either mm -hmm. to have them sit idly that long. Mm -hmm. And it's important for our residents to know that our residential permit parking uh, means something. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a critical issue and I think we're going to be keenly uh, yeah. observant of how that goes in the next uh, few months and over the next year. One of the things that interested me in the discussion, because we had people very concerned about a car sitting for a long time, was, and we had the car to go guy there, was we kind of went back and forth. It is in, everybody's interests are aligned, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah. you said. that the, the car to go, ideally that car would only sit there for five minutes. I mean, they want it moving as much as possible. Right. The neighborhoods want to moving as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So our interests are aligned, and I, I think this is going to work out. And an interesting dynamic, Libby, I don't know if you remembered, which uh, makes a lot of sense to mm -hmm. me. Uh, certainly there were a lot of documented cases, and it's gotten better over time of the cars sitting for more than 24 hours. Yeah. But what makes car to go a challenge is that all of them look alike. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this we, is right. <laughs> we may think that a it's car has been sitting there oh, for four or five days, it's but actually it, it, a could different been, car. it could have been a different right. car. Right, right. So, right. Uh, well, this is an exciting new world we're moving into, the sharing economy. It is. Yeah. From the sharing economy to essential services, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll talk about decisions the board made that touch upon the growing challenges facing the county to find space for our facility needs. Welcome back to County Board Wrap-Up, our monthly chat with county board members about some of the key decisions they take at their public meetings. With us today are County Board Chair Libby Garvey and Board Member Christian Dorsey. So well, let's talk a little bit about facilities, which has been very much on your <laughs> minds lately, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the board took action on Fire Station 8. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that action? Sure. Now, obviously, before we took an action previously, which determined that Fire Station 8 would needed to be rebuilt, was going to be in the same place when we were done. Um, and the thing about fire stations, as far as facilities go, is they're really key, and you can't just like not have one for a yes. while while you're building it. Yes. So one of the issues here was fine. We decided where it was going to be. Where while we're rebuilding, where are we going to put 
the other fire station. Um, you mean the temporary, temporary fire station? A temporary yes. fire station, exactly. And um, we actually purchased two properties right there on the fire station eight uh, property, um, and we are working on getting a third, and that's going to enable us to put the temporary, you know, have them build the new fire station on the, the new land, and uh -huh. that we won't build a temporary station because we'll use the old one until we're done. We used to do that when I was on the school board. There were a number of cases like Wakefield High School. We would do that. You'd keep all of the students in the school, build the new one next door, mm -hmm. kids move out, and then you tear it down. So you don't have to find the temporary facility, and that's a good thing. And this is all on Lee Highway, right? Yeah. It is. It is right there on so Lee Highway. So this is Lee Highway. Highway, Culpeper Street, and okay. uh, you know the properties are just right next door to the existing fire station, and one of them actually has a house, a fully, or they, they both have houses on them, and, and one is a relatively new house, which will serve as sort of the living quarters for this temporary fire mm -hmm. station mm -hmm. setup. Mm -hmm. So it'll look a little different in the building phase. You know, you'll have a single family home and then a tented area for the, uh, for the trucks and the equipment while uh, there is a rebuilding process for the permanent station. So it's a really creative use and you wouldn't believe it, guess what? what? It's actually the cheapest option yep, we saved money. that we oh. had for possibly dealing with this issue, mm -hmm. even building on other existing county land. So this turned out to be a win-win all the way around. Yeah. So you did look at other options. Absolutely. Oh yes, we looked at quite a few. Um, Absolutely. So no, and it's great. So it, it costs us less and we end up with some property. That's, That's right. Property. It's great. Well, and you also took a decision to buy some other property. And I think the interesting thing about the other property that you decided <laughs> to buy is that it's, it's not, not in Arlington. Arlington. <laughs> it's not in Arlington. Well, you know, we keep talking about how we have 26 square miles and yes. that's all we've got. What can we do? Well, one of the things we can do is buy land <laughs> elsewhere. Um, this has to still get worked through. There's some zoning issues that need to yeah. be checked out. It's in Fairfax County, not okay. far. And it's, a, it's our bus maintenance facility. Now, people might say, well, why don't you even do more in store buses? Because bus storage is an issue. And one of the things that you learn when you look at this is buses that we're using every day, mm -hmm. they, they park for the night or for whenever. They can't be miles and miles away oh. because it's, just, it's very expensive. It just doesn't work to have them travel back and forth. But mm -hmm. a maintenance facility, those buses, that's when they go in for heavy maintenance and mm -hmm. heavy maintenance. They go in and they'll be there for several weeks or more. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine if it's it's outside of Arlington. So it's a great way to basically some industrial use. It's not comfortable to put that really in our community. Um, and there's some area that's zoned for that, set for that, all set, not too far away in Fairfax. So we're looking to buy it, which I think would be great. So Christian, we already uh, lease that's some right. land in Fairfax. Why did we decide we wanted to own instead of lease? Well, security mm -hmm. and sustainability. You know, lease land is always subject to the whim of the owner. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the current lease facility was mm -hmm. not adequate for the size of the art fleet that we expect in mm -hmm. just a few years. So mm -hmm. we had a need for a bigger facility mm -hmm. and the current site wasn't going to accommodate it. So we could have looked at leasing another site somewhere, but really the option to buy gives us the ability to make sure we know in perpetuity mm -hmm. this is something that we're hmm. going to be using right. as an asset. And then two, I'm uncomfortable with, uh, you know, essential services that are provided by the county, uh, you know, owned by another entity. Um, hmm. It's great to be able to secure mm -hmm. your own equipment and when you're dealing with bus maintenance, you know, mm -hmm. you want that to be a secure facility. It's mm -hmm. not just a garage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, as it turns out, uh, buying in neighboring uh, Fairfax County in the Springfield area mm -hmm. is fairly cost effective in terms of land values, mm -hmm. which is a good thing, uh, which is important because even though it's, it's better to do maintenance out of your county, it's still not great. You'd mm -hmm. still love to be able to have that all within yeah. your boundaries uh, because we do incur some costs taking vehicles to and from that facility. Mm -hmm. But all in all, we all can in all, it, live with it, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I totally agree with you. I'm, I'm very uncomfortable having a, a crucial facility that we absolutely need belong to somebody yeah. else. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you find we don't have it, and then you're scrambling, yeah. and it gets harder and harder. And Libby, isn't there another story here that uh, we think our art fleet is going to be growing, which mm -hmm. means it's going to be even more successful than it already is? Oh, and it, it, it keeps continuing. And I, you know, uh, as uh, Christian knows well, with Metro, we've been doing all our right, yeah. doing, doing safe track and stuff, and more and more people are, are discovering our, our art buses. And we're, we're doing a lot of talks with schools about getting more and more of our students on yeah. art buses. Um, I think we can really increase that and, and really mm -hmm. make some, some, some good changes, but it will require more buses. More buses. And our fleet's going to grow 50% yeah. by 2020. Oh, wow. So this need is, is not mm -hmm. just projected. It's mm -hmm. real. It's real. Yeah, we know it's coming. Well, and speaking of schools, growth, and facilities, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is the board taking an action to give itself the a 
authority hmm. to allow some modifications right. to setbacks and heights for new schools that are being yeah. planned. What right. is that all about? Right. Well, you know, we have our zoning uh, code limits the board in what it can do. And we took an action to give us some flexibility to deal with the recommendations we've been talking about in Arlington for a while, how to better utilize our land. And mm -hmm. with school facilities, we know that we want to build up and not out. We mm -hmm. don't want to have sprawling right, right. campuses. We want to be very efficient on our space. Mm -hmm. uh, yet we had have height limitations in mm -hmm. the zoning district where schools are. Mm -hmm. And with the exception of Washington Lee High School, uh, that height limit is 45 feet. Okay. which is not enough no. to accommodate no. what's planned for H.B. Uh, Woodlawn, which mm -hmm. is going to be going in Roslyn. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what the future may bring. So mm -hmm. we want to create in our zoning ordinance the flexibility right. for the board to be able to uh, allow these uses at a height that is appropriate for the times mm -hmm. and for the surrounding neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we have now uh, unlimited flexibility to allow building heights for schools, just mm -hmm. for schools, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, based on certain findings. And okay. those findings include principally whether it's compatible with the surrounding with the neighborhood. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. so, you know, and one of the things I learned when I was on the school board would actually, there's nowhere in Arlington that's zoned for schools. I mean, where schools are now, those are zoned for schools, mm -hmm. but there isn't a school zone. Right. Um, so it's, it's really great to have this sort of blanket permission to be flexible wherever we find. So schools. Libby, is this causing some angst in the neighborhoods? Do you, and and mm -hmm. will people still get to weigh in on things mm. like design of new schools? Yes, yes they're... and yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> people are always kind of anxious. I mean, there's so much change going on. It's just, I think it can be unsettling for people. But um, absolutely, people, we continue to have people weigh in. And really, I think what is appropriate and what makes sense is what counts. Um, and this board, and I'm sure boards in the future, will be listening to folks because we all want it to work out. We don't want something inappropriate. And, you know, certainly I think, uh, you know, with the HB Woodlawn mm -hmm. site, there the board can, in that case, go up to 175 feet. Mm -hmm. the schools plan for 75 feet. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, capacity that's not being utilized, but we don't know what decades from now right. will bring. Right. And you yeah. don't want to be in the business of amending your zoning ordinance on an ad hoc case by case basis. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to set some clear uh, parameters to guide future growth and development, and that's what we were trying to do. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to keep talking about facilities in our next segment. We'll take another short break. When we come back, changes coming to two community centers and a recycling center. <music> back for our final segment of County Board Wrap-Up, our monthly chat with the chair and other board members exploring some of the key decisions the board made at its monthly meeting. With me today is Chair Libby Garvey and board member Christian Dorsey. And Libby, I wanted to ask you about the board's action uh, on Lubber Run Community mm -hmm. Center. You approved a contract, and I think this is a very important step forward in that project. It sure is. So that Lubber Run Community Center was built in 1956. Wow. It was the first, apparently, building that was built to be a community center. Mm -hmm. But because it was built in 1956, it's not ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. It needs a lot of work. It's been needing for a while to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to replace it with a center that's going to have really a full complement of um, you know of activities and services and we're going to have a gym uh, mm -hmm. and it's really going to be I think a great addition for the neighborhood mm -hmm. there are concerns because it's something new mm -hmm. and different uh, we are planning on underground parking because we're going to want to oh. preserve the green space it's a beautiful area there mm -hmm. um, staff is talking about having a room where you, you could even have sort of receptions and look out and see the trees I mean it's it's because it's 1956 mm -hmm. it's all it's all bricked in and there are these beautiful views of the park that oh, you don't okay. have in the building which uh -huh. you could have we need gyms I mean we really need um, activity centers for all age groups frankly mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. playground will stay um, and so I, th I think it's going to be great uh, mm -hmm. and we're going to include the community in the process of designing it um, mm -hmm. and getting it to look the way they would like it mm -hmm. um, so we're moving forward and I think it's really long overdue so it hasn't been designed Yet. Right, that, that right. was our action to award the design contract. Oh, okay. Right, right. So how long a process are we talking about? Well, it's oh. going to be a community process of design, mm -hmm. and it, it's going to take as long as it takes. Okay. Uh, we yeah. want to make sure yeah. people get happy with not only the physical design, but really the programmatic elements, and that will really drive kind right. of how what the building looks like and how it feels and mm -hmm. interacts with the surrounding community and the open space that's there. So. 
I hope it's a robust process, and mm -hmm. you know, we we hope we hope they do it efficiently. But mm -hmm. there's no if we have to take a little extra yeah. time, we will to get it right. But I I, I think it's going to be good. Um, mm -hmm. it, it really there's change, and I, I think as people start to see it and start to see the possibilities, they'll get excited about it. And I'm delighted that we've decided to do. I mean, it was you know at one point our staff came to us and said. You know, can we? Are, are you gonna? Is it gonna be? Are we, we are thinking of suggesting underground. This is parking. This is gonna add a lot of expense. And I mm -hmm. think all of us said, yeah, we need more green space. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. It's worth it. So this is another instance where, on one site, you're going to have a lot of different activities and mm -hmm. also open space. Right. A Including lot of Including keeping the preschool. There's a preschool oh. program there yeah. that's much beloved. Oh. We're planning to make sure that we, you know, continue to keep that too. So okay. A lot yeah. of cluck for our buck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that. That's that's, a, that, that's a better one. That's I mean, good. my my grandkids went there for you know, summer camp and stuff. I'm assuming when it gets rebuilt, they can still do that. Well, you also took action on another community center, mm -hmm. another one that's very popular, yes. Barcroft yeah. Sports and Fitness. Yes. You approved a contract for that. What's going to be happening there? Well, you know, I, ironically, this is going to become more of a single-use facility. Yeah, isn't it oh. interesting? Lar yeah. Largely yeah. focused on gymnastics, okay. which uh, I'm a parent of a child who's gone through gymnastics programs. I can personally attest mm -hmm. they are incredibly popular, okay. and uh, the wait list is huge. And uh, when you have to sign up at 7 a.m., if you are not there by 7.05, you're out of luck. So we are oh my goodness. far under capacity yeah, no, with our gymnastic demand. space. Oh, yep. okay. So Barcroft Sports and Fitness, which now accommodates also um, hockey, mm -hmm. uh, ball hockey, mm -hmm. as well as basketball oh. in a multi-purpose gymnasium, mm -hmm. that's now going to become a, a gymnastics complex that's mm -hmm. going to uh, better accommodate the classes, provide mm -hmm. an opportunity for yeah. adult gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, uh, nearby we have another community center that was recently recently uh, completed mm -hmm. Arlington Mill, oh, yes. which has the capacity to absorb what was in the Barcroft right. gym. Right. Okay. So this is a chance to, to really uh, meet the, the incredible needs that we have for athletic mm -hmm. facilities, which mm -hmm. a healthy community needs to have. So. You know, we're getting creative we're, we're and getting there. Uh, we're meeting the needs. <laughs> and I, I think part of the thing about gymnastics, too, is that there's this equipment. And so it isn't as easy to share, you know, like somebody plays basketball and like another basketball team comes in or somebody doing indoor, you know, an indoor ball sport. Uh -huh. You leave and there's the floor and then you come on. But with gymnastics, there's all of this equipment oh, yeah. that okay. needs to be there. And you need a specially high ceiling. And mm -hmm. so it's not so easy to multi multitask yeah. with the with the. Uh, well, and I think we literally have hundreds, if not thousands of kids involved thousands. in gymnastics. Oh, absolutely. Thousands. 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 Absolutely. Wow. And it's hmm. not just recreational. We have them competing on right. teams. Uh, teams. Right? Uh, yeah. Travel teams, well-renowned, oh, yeah. uh, very successful travel teams, mm -hmm. and you know, hitherto we have not provided an opportunity hmm. for adults to actually participate in gymnastics. So this will allow us to this meet all exciting. of that. It, it is. is really great. It is. It's good, and that should be, I think, completed by the end of next year, end oh, of 2017. Yeah. It's faster to kind of rework than to completely build new and design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing I wanted to ask you about is the decision to move a recycling center, which mm. seems like mm -hmm. a somewhat mm -hmm. odd decision yeah. on the face of it. Why, <laughs> why did we need to move a recycling center? And we center? had to do it in two pieces. So, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, we did some history, and I will. So this, the recycling center, where it is right now, is down at Columbia Pike and Four Mile Run. Okay. And it's not a particularly attractive uh, recycling center now anymore. I mean, they're just some big dumpsters. It's actually been fairly, I would say, abused is what you yeah. could use it. Okay. People will arrive at all hours of the night and you get up in the morning and there's stuff there that should be dumping. there. Illegal oh, yeah. dumping. Oh. Yes, that would be the short term. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I remember when it opened, I will just because I've been here so long and I remember my husband and I being excited that there was a place to, yeah. close by to go with our like phone books and things because we don't even have phone books anymore. Oh, yeah. So how times change. So over time, this has just not been working so well for the community. People okay. come to us and said, we need to move this. And I think the board was saying, yeah, we need to move this. So at the Trade Center, mm -hmm. we have some recycling and, re and we're doing it. So we decided to move it. That that would probably be the best. There was some look, but the Trade Center, and that is um, you know, an enclosed facility, so it's okay. not open at 1 in the morning, so people can't go in there. Okay. Um, and I think it was interesting that we still had to do, like there's the zoning question, we still had to make it legal for the Recycling Center to be mm -hmm. there at the Trade Center, mm -hmm. um, and then we could vote, vote to move it there. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't think there was anybody that didn't want us to do this. No, uh, no. Unlike most issues, this okay. really was... This was not a controversial. This was not, not no. controversial. And there were no difficult decisions. Right. <laughs> so and, and you know, the times have changed. When it was put on Columbia Pike and Four Mile Run, there wasn't really uh, any recycling center in South Arlington, right. and we didn't recycle at the curb. 
Now, now we oh, do. Okay. So yeah. really, this is serving a niche. People who have bulk recycling issues that can't fit with the weekly collections. So, you know, the, the need for that to be a 24-7 availability has been reduced. And being at the Trade Center, it's now co-located with mm -hmm. other recycling uses. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. and, and now, at a critical uh, intersection along Columbia Pike, we can now really think about mm -hmm. how that public space can be used right. to better support the revitalization of the Columbia Make Pike area. Make it a area. lot more attractive. It's going to be great for the well, neighborhood. It's yeah, it's great yeah. for the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, We've come to the end of our very last <laughs> county board wrap up of 2016. Yeah, here we you are. You have a tissue? I'm yeah, sad. I know. <laughs> and you've been my, you've done it three times with me, I think, Christian. I have, thank I you. I loved it, Madam yes, Chair. Yes, you're great. I it's loved great. It. Thank well, you. Well, and Madam Chair, I just want to thank you. We all want to thank you for your year of service. Thank you so much. Oh, it's I, been a pleasure. Well, it really has. Thank you. You guys all make it possible. I don't do this all on my own. I mean, it's just, it's been a real team effort, and it's been a good team effort, I think. I, yeah. I'm oh. telling you, it's, um, it's flown by. I think I'll, t yeah, I'll really pick has. up my it's option your, for another year. Yeah, good, good, good. It's your first year. <laughs> you You're both have no second. option but to pick oh. up your option for another year. <laughs> okay. Well, well listen, thank you yeah, so thank much. You. And thank you, our viewers, for joining us today and all throughout the year. Don't forget to visit the county website, arlingtonva.us, to learn more about the services, programs, and initiatives your county provides. You can always send us questions on these or any other issues by email at atv at arlingtonva.us or on Twitter at ArlingtonVA, hashtag County Board Wrap Up. Have a safe and happy holiday season, everyone, and we'll see you in the new year.